Hey guys, I want to share some thoughts with you on um, some verses and uh, just kind of looking into them more on the commentaries and stuff. And it kind of has to do with this section in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, like verse 23 through 28 or so. A um, couple of verses in particular, but um, I don't know how I really got to this, but I was looking up on some, on the internet, I guess, some things about David's throne and God's throne and how Christ is sitting on David's throne and, and more verses and more proofs of that in scripture. And I found a, a website that has quite a bit that I'm going to look over more. Um, because, you know, the, the Christ of the Covenants book is great and it, it has a lot of information, a lot of verses, and it goes into pretty good detail, but it kind of gives like a basic framework of things too, and I want to go even more into detail in, in some aspects, but anyway, um, this kind of led me to this verse where it's talking about how basically, you know, Christ will reign until all of his enemies are under his feet, and then the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And then uh, in verse 24, before those, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, uh, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. And uh, so these are some interesting verses here with, with some of the commentaries that I've been looking at. And this isn't really going to be like an expository thing, but I just want to share some ideas from some commentaries that I've read and they don't all agree and I mean I have this section here because I know a lot of people um, like dispensational thought would apply these to um, some future resurrection or sometime after or before the millennial kingdom and stuff like that as as if these things are kind of waiting to happen but there are some commentaries that describe these things as already happened and so uh, For, I mean, it talks about how the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, and it seems like the word shall always makes us think that that's something that's in the future that hasn't happened yet. But I do think that Jesus conquered death on the cross. Uh, well, when he was resurrected, he conquered death. And um, I think that Satan has victory over Satan and sin and death. And all of those things are kind of related because Satan tempted Eve, and, and because of the temptation, you know, Adam sinned, and, and then death came, and sin and death came into the world. And we have scriptures saying that, you know, basically, that death is swallowed up in victory and stuff. And so, yeah, we still die as humans, but we, but us, those of us as believers, we really don't die, um, because we go on to live, and our bodies just die, basically. And, um, when it was, so when it was, so there are some commentaries that interpret that the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. It basically means that the last enemy that was destroyed or the last enemy that is destroyed is death. And, uh, basically that, basically that Christ has, has conquered all, you know, all of his enemies are under his feet and, and Satan and sin and death basically are included in that. And, um, you know, you could get the idea that for he must reign and tell this and this in this verse, tell he hath put all enemies under his feet. Some could, you know, suggest that his reign would end or something after that. But no, he has an internal reign and he's reigning now. And, um, when it talks about him delivering up the kingdom to God, one of the commentators says, this is imagery of like a son going out to conquer and bringing all the spoils and stuff before the father basically and honoring the father and it doesn't mean that Christ is giving up the kingdom to his father okay that he's no longer ruler or anything like that um, and so that's some ideas that people can get to and uh, you know at the beginning of this well, even back in verse 22, it talks about, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And then, but every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ that is coming. And I think this is speaking of the resurrection. And I've said before, previously, a lot of times, that I don't believe in a 
physical bodily resurrection, and this is <clears throat> what a lot of dispensationalists believe in. Um, I think that when a person dies, they're spiritually resurrected, and that's it. And I think that when Christ uh, was resurrected, it was basically a spiritual resurrection. He had a body that people saw, but it wasn't, you know, like a normal body. Um, so it's pretty interesting. But, so, let's see, if this said, uh, but, it says, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. And it's talking about all being made alive. And Christ resurrected. And then afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. And so I think that this also connects the idea with what I've said before, that the coming of Christ is when we die and we're resurrected and we go to be with the Lord. And if this isn't the case, then people would believe that this verse says that the resurrection hasn't happened yet because Christ hasn't came yet. If you think that it's the rapture or you think it's the second coming, the millennial kingdom or whatever, some event that hasn't happened yet, basically, besides, you know, our death, then you think that all the believers, all the saints before us haven't been resurrected. And usually dispensationalists are okay with that because they think that there's a bodily resurrection. They think that, you know, the saints are still awaiting this time until our bodies are resurrected. But, um, you know, our bodies are mortal and we have no need of our bodies, you know, after they're dead. Um, so, there's some interesting thoughts on this, and I want to look into it more to give, you know, a more pointed expository. But basically, you know, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. A lot of commentators say that it basically means that the last enemy that was destroyed is death. And uh, it's not, you know changing the words or anything, I think it's just a misunderstanding of, it's, you know, it's a language issue with how the King James Bible is, and, and just, in general, how this whole passage flows about, you know, he must reign until he hath put all of his enemies under his feet, and the last enemy is death. It basically means that Christ reigns forever, and he has conquered everything. He's conquered Satan and sin and death. And, um, so, those are interesting thoughts, but um, I can see how a lot of this would tie into some dispensational thought with the second coming and, and the millennial kingdom and all that. So, there are other ways to interpret this that I think that are better, and I'm looking into those more. So, just some thoughts. God bless.